uh, make any headway in terms of drawing companies or workers to come to Calgary? You know, it was a terrific conference. It was a great opportunity to be there. We took a hundred Calgary startups with us. Uh, and they were exposed to investors as well as potential employees um, throughout uh, North America, really. So I'm really pleased, and we had a huge splash. In fact, when I landed, the very first thing I heard from the very first thing I heard from the mayor of Toronto was, "What have you done to my city? Why are there Calgary banners everywhere?" Uh, which was great, and so we made a real big splash. I myself had the opportunity to spend some time with larger businesses talking about the importance of Calgary, and I suspect we'll see a couple of real big moves very soon. Is this the right way to do this? Is this, is this the kind of economic development work we need? It is a way to do this. You know, you need to have a really, really robust toolbox. So you've got to have things like the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund. You've got to have people responding to inbound inquiries. You've got to be doing outbound missions. Uh, you've got to do talent attraction work and many, many, many other things, really talking about our four big pillars of how we do economic development here. But once in a while, it's helpful to make a good splash and get all the media that comes with that. And I think uh, that my colleagues at Calgary Economic Development did a great job on that. There's a bit of criticism last week about the amount of councillors going to FCM. Can you justify just the amount that are going? What time of year is it? Uh, last week of May? Yes, I think I answer this question every last week of May. Uh, I think it's extremely helpful for councillors to get out there to see best practices, to see how things are done in other jurisdictions. Um, I have to go regardless, I've got no choice in the matter. Um, but I like it when they come because I think it gives them a great opportunity to get better at their jobs. And this year, of course, we have the additional responsibility of really talking about the energy sector and educating other Canadians on the importance of supporting the energy industry. But as you indicated last week, I mean, FCM has already basically approved that resolution. Right? So what It's not so much about FCM and their lobbying, which is already happening. It's about hearts and minds of those municipal councillors. Remember, these are grassroots politicians, and there are thousands of them representing their communities with you know, their own microphones and their own press scores and their own communities. And I think that it is a real good opportunity that to make sure they're ready for the right answers when questions in their communities come up about things like pipeline infrastructure or energy independence. Besides federal election, what's on the big city mayor's caucus agenda? Mostly federal election this time. Uh, it mostly is about preparing our strategy. I know that the big city mayors are doing something which is a little different, which is we're actually meeting as the big city mayors with all of the big political parties. They're sending representatives and we'll be grilling them on their platform in that format. And of course, as always, we're talking about affordable housing and infrastructure. Anything else? Questions on the matter you just approved? Yeah. Um, why is that corner so important? It's a critical corner for the city of Calgary, 17th Avenue Southwest and 14th Street. It's a gateway in and out of the Beltline District, in and out of the downtown core. It's two major commuting roads coming together and a real opportunity to create something quite special on that corner. And quite frankly, that corner eh, is not that special right now. And so, you know, as long as the developer gets this one right, and I think they will, we'll have the opportunity to create a real signature element for Calgary, a great place to live and work and play on the intersection of two major streets. You know, yesterday I had the opportunity on a beautiful spring day to walk around the residential streets of the Beltline, Lilacs Road, people were in Thompson Family Park and in the off-leash dog park, and I realized, you know, this is such a special neighborhood. People live here, they work here, there's terrific restaurants here, they travel here, and it's all about enhancing and making this neighborhood even better, because it is really a jewel for the city. What are your concerns about that corner? Your, uh, some of your colleagues heaped the praise, but you weren't unqualified. What was your Look, concern? it's gotta be amazing, right? So set the bar high never say it's good enough. That's pretty much one of my rules. I am a little bit concerned. I was a little bit concerned, but I got an excellent answer about the impact on traffic on that corner because you have to balance the need for huge density on major corners with what happens with the access and egress from that actual site. And in fact, I got a really satisfying answer that by opening up that intersection of 17th Avenue and 15th Street Southwest, you're actually creating a new circular traffic pattern that should actually, for most directions of traffic, make it a little bit better for those going up and down 17th Avenue and 14th Street. And we're going to lose a building. Yeah, you know, it is a lovely building, a uh, nice style mid-century uh, from, uh, from the last century, but at the same time, 
I think most Calgarians wouldn't recognize that there was a great building there because the front facades are frankly just not nice. And so I hope that what we will place it with will become even more of an architectural jewel for the city. What didn't work across the street? You suggested that. that, that there uh, you didn't put real density there. You put kind of a three or four story bar there. Uh, that is not, I think, the ideal thing when you're thinking about mixed use in a residential neighborhood. So it should have been the same type of thing? It would have been nice one? to have a mirror image, yeah. Your thoughts about the golf courses? My thoughts about the golf courses. What specifically about them? Why do they not make money? You know, are they not money? What's the well, you know, uh, some years ago, I think I was one of the few members of council that was opposed to a change to actually allow the golf courses to have some public subsidy. Uh, because I thought that we should really be able to cover them off with green fees. And I was convinced, well I wasn't convinced, but council was convinced, that the role they play in providing affordable golf, particularly for seniors, is worth some level of public subsidy, as we do subsidize other sports uh, in the city as well, other recreation facilities and other sports. So, last year was a particularly bad year um, because of weather and because of the renovations that were going on at McCall Lake. I think that, to, well, all that's before us today is starting a conversation on real estate and what the real estate uh, decisions that make sense on these golf courses are. I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, we should always be sharp and really understanding that with our limited money and our limited land, that we are providing the best possible services to the largest number of people. Residents who live near golf courses may be upset to hear if they're getting it redeveloped or sold off. What do you say to them? It's not so many of our city golf courses that are right, um, you know, the way some of the private ones were backing on to residential homes. The good news is the city uh, will always make sure that whatever happens, if anything happens, and maybe nothing will happen, it's a long ways off to have those discussions, but if anything happens, the city will be very responsible to make sure that the investment in the community leaves the community even better.